Hello, this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine. Continue to read the Iliad by Homer. I'm going to continue to read. Proetus' wife, you see, was mad for Bellerof, and the lovely Antine lasted to couple with him, all in secret. Futile, she could never seduce the man's strong will. His seasoned, firm resolve. So straight to the king she went, blurting out her lies. I wish you to die, Proetus, if you do not kill Bellerophon. Bellerophon spent on dragging me down with him in lust, through I fight him all the way. All of it falls, but the king ceased when he heard a tale like that. He balked at killing the man. He'd some respect at least, but he quickly sent him off to Lycia, gave him tokens, murder signs, scratched in a folded tablet, and many of them too, enough to kill a man. He told him to show them to Antie's father, that would mean his death. So off he went to Lycia safe in the escort of gods, and once he reached the broad highlands cut by the rushing Xanthus, the king of Lycia gave him a royal welcome. Nine days he feasted him, nine oxen slaughtered, when the tenth dawn shone with her rose-red fingers, he began to quest him. Asked to see his credentials, whatever he brought him from his in-law, Proteus, but then, once he received that fatal message sent from his own daughter's husband, first he ordered Bellerophon to kill the Chimera, green monster sprung of the gods, nothing human, all lying in front, all snake behind, all gold between, terrible, blasting, lethal fire at every breath. But he laid her low, obeying signs from the gods. Next he fought the Solimi, tribesman, bent on glory, roughest battle of man he ever entered, so he claimed. Then, for a third test, he brought the Amazon down, a match for man in war, but as he turned back, his host spun out the tightest trap of all. Picking the best man from Lycia, far and wide, he set an ambush that never came home again. Fearless, Bellerophon killed them all. Then, yes, when the king could see the man's power at last, a true son of the gods, he pressed him hard to stay. He offered his own daughter's hand in marriage. He gave him half his royal honors as the king, and the Lycians carved him out of a grand estate, the choicest land in the realm, rich in vineyards and good tilled fields for him to lord it over. And his wife bore good Bellerophon, three children, Isander, Hippolochus, and Laudamia. Lord Mia lay in the arms of Zeus, who rules the world, and she bore the god of a son, our great commander, Sapheden, helmed in bronze. But the day soon came when even Bellerophon was hated by all the gods. Across the Aline plain he wandered, all alone, eating his heart out, a fugitive on the run from the beaten tracks. Of man. His son, Alexander, killed by the war god, never sated, a boy fighting the Solemi always out of glory. Laudemia, Antimis, flashing her golden reins, cut her down in anger, but Hippolochus, feathering, feathering me, I am proud to say, he sent me off to Troy. And I hear his urgings ringing in my ears, always be the best, my boy, the bravest, and hold your head up, 
high above the others. Never disgrace the generation of your fathers. They were the bravest champions born in Corinth, in Lycia, far and wide. There you have my lineage. That is the blood I claim, my royal birth. When he heard that Diomedes' spirits lifted, raising his spear, the lord of the war cried, draw it home, planting it deep down in the earth that feeds us all, and with winning words he called out to Glaucus, the young captain, Splendid, you are my friend, my guest from the days of our grandfathers long ago, Noble Onions hosted your brave Bellerophon once. He held him there in his ball house twenty whole days, and they gave each other handsome gifts of friendship. My kinsman offered a gleaming sword belt, rich red. Bellerophon gave a cup, two-handled, solid gold. I left it at home when I set out for Troy. My father, Tydeus, I really do not remember. I'm just a baby when father left me then. That time an Achaean army went to die at Thebes. So now I'm your host and friend in the heart of Argos. You are mine in Lycia. When I visit in your country, come, let us keep clear of each other's spears, even there in the thick of battle. Look. Plenty of children there for me to kill, your famous allies too. Any soldier the god will bring in range, or I can run to ground. And plenty of Argives too, kill them if you can. But let, let's treat armor. The man must know our claim. We are sworn friends from our father's days till now. Both agreed, both fighters sprang from their chariots, clasped each other's hands, and traded packs of friendship. But the son of Cronus, Zeus, stole Glaucus' wits away. He traded his gold armor for bronze with Diomedes. The worth of a hundred oxen just for nine. And now, when Hector reached the sky, gates and the great oak, the wives and daughters of Troy came rushing up around him, asking about their sons, brothers, friends, and husbands, but Hector told them only, pray to the gods. All the children women, one after another, hard sorrows, were hanging over many, and soon he came to Priam's palace, that magnificent structure built wide with porches and colonnades of polished stone. And deep within its walls were fifty sleeping chambers, mansoned in smooth, lustrous ashlar, linked in a line, where the sons of Priam slept beside their wedded wives, and facing these, opening out across the inner courtyard, lay the twelve sleeping chambers of Priam's daughters, mansoned and roofed in lustrous ashlar, linked in a line where the sons-in-law of Priam slept besides their wives. I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.